Good evening. In a word, it was ugly. The world of finance today became a world of fear as stocks plunged, currencies crumbled, and worries grew. Not just here, around the globe, though this country was one of the most directly affected. Here's what happened. The Bank of Canada hiked its key lending rate one full percentage point in a bid to stop the sliding Canadian dollar. But the loonie kept on falling, losing another half a cent to close at another record low. And as the bank rate went up, stocks tumbled, the TSE plummeting 372 points. In New York, meantime, the Dow was down 357 points. Part of the reason for all this money madness, Russia. More economic turmoil there today. And rumors President Boris Yeltsin is about to resign. We will have more on the overseas angle later, but first, the story here in Canada. Our coverage begins with Eric Sorensen and a day that has left a lot of Canadians wondering what's next. It was a tumultuous day on Bay Street and the anxiety soon spread to Main Street at banks and trust companies across the country. Absolutely, a lot of people are calling, wondering um, the status of their investments, um, what they should be doing as well. That uncertainty began with a decision here at the Bank of Canada, where it seems global pressure to do something has overtaken domestic pressures to do nothing. After holding the line on interest rates for eight months, the central bank has catapulted the bank rate up one full percentage point to provide support for the Canadian dollar in order to bolster confidence. The bank acknowledging the currency decline has more recently developed a momentum that signals a diminishing of confidence in Canadian dollar investments. This analyst says it's about time the bank acted. It's told the world that the bank is there, that the bank will do something if necessary, and that it's not just a one-way bet against the Canadian dollar. And we sure don't need to see a run on our currency at the same time that we've got all these other problems going on. The Bank of Canada identified three big problems for the dollar. The Asian crisis, low commodity prices for things like lumber and minerals that Canada exports, and now a financial crisis in Russia all have combined to drive the Canadian dollar to historic lows. Huge global pressures, rational or irrational, are dumping currencies which are commodity based and rushing to the US dollar. And these are forces which are, are no fault of our own, but they are not something we have any control of. Right. To no one's surprise, the stock market took a wild ride down. Confidence wilted when the hike in the bank rate didn't stop the dollar from plummeting further. I mean, the Bank of Canada has raised interest rates three times in the past 12 months up to today in an effort to keep the value of the dollar stronger, and it hasn't worked. Why would it work today? The Minister of Finance, cautious not to say anything that would make things worse, supported the Bank of Canada's move. Yes, there's going to be volatility, but I can tell you that given Canada's strong financial position, given our productivity, uh, that we are going to do very, very well in the years ahead. But the opposition says the government could have and should have done more than sit on the sidelines. We'd much rather see the economy be spurred on and uh, the dollar strengthened by a um, deep, uh, deep uh, agenda of tax cuts. Uh, but the government has consistently rejected that. The last time the bank rate was bumped up a full point was three years ago to shore up the dollar before the Quebec referendum. And the rate came down right afterwards. But this time the financial turmoil wasn't made in Canada, it's global. And that makes it hard to predict where the Canadian dollar and the economy are headed next. Eric Sorensen, CBC News, Ottawa.